Glenn will need to find a new position to drop his shot. It's a false start for Anson's Bay. Mulcahy Bay. Skipper Pete can't seem to catch a break. There's our size one, someone's already eaten it. Octopus attack after octopus attack. Can't use the culprit here. Get two octopus to go to the pot, one octopus to kill up one. They don't like each other, don't they go mating. Pete's moon theory might hold some weight. Most lobster men keep the octopus and sell the tentacles to local fish buyers for about $11 a kilo. Just legs and bloody tails and things going all directions and them octopus tearing them to pieces. Slimy bugger. Up to 40% less fish while the octopus been in our pot, just kind of. The worst in my fishing career. Well, I started in 1974, so that's the worst I've ever seen. Pete counts the numbers to value the loss. We had carnage this morning. Lost about 14 size crayfish to octopus. They all went out. They was in early in the night and uh, gone, disappeared, left the damage, stopped the pops from fishing. She's looking around about $1,500 worth or more, and that's a big loss. The curse of the full moon has also hit the Kaikoura hard. Most of these are missing legs. There's about three dead so far. Their pots are full of hundreds of dollars worth of stressed out and dead lobsters. This one, the octopus has chased them around and around. They've worn themselves out. They're completely knackered. Look, got a job to hold his legs up, that one. But I think he'll be OK when he goes in the tank. So we'll give him a chance. Yeah, they do eat a fair few. They, uh... They normally get the biggest ones in the pot first. Last one? Yeah, I think so, yeah. It's their last pot of the shot. We've got 76 today. It's a sluggish star. They're well down on their average daily target of 100 big reds. Not much we can do in this weather, so... until we can get that dinghy off. Now that the swell is starting to ease, they'll switch to dinghy fishing to try and boost their lobster per pot ratio. Tasmania. We're south of Bruny Island. I think we're about five, six miles off the shore now. The bowl contender, she was built in 1992 and she's 19.2 metres long. It's a great sea boat. Um, I've got full trust in it. Skipper Squizzy is under huge financial pressure to catch 900 brindle lobsters as fast as he can. I feel like I'm getting teased this morning. We're having uh, a few good pots here and there, but there's still a lot of blank pots. The catch will all be exported live to China. The quicker he fills the order, the lower his running costs, the more money he makes. It was in bed when we caught that one. They've caught 426 lobsters so far in just two days. 274 fish to go to get the 500 kilos. Well, close. I, I can taste it. I just want to get it and get it as quick as I can. Sometimes I think outside the square, so I like doing things different to other fishermen. Um, we work deep for water most of the time on the Brindles. That's what we're catching now. It seems to be working for us. That's good. Optimistic. Optimistic about today. The weather's just up and down like a yo-yo. We'll just work around it, do the best we can. The wind's picking up. The swell's on the rise. And that's a problem. Underwater turbulence can stop lobsters from feeding. Squizzy decides to head further offshore. Come on, let's just, just get there quick as we can. Come on, baby. You want to go fishing, man, you want to stand out here. You don't want to stand in there. Any dickhead can do that. Look at Squizzy, he does it quite well. Mulcahy Bay. 
any day it could be a better day than yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, it's six crayfish don't really tickle me fancy. Skipper Pete needs to make up lost ground after a series of octopus attacks. This actually is the worst I've ever seen in my whole life. I've never seen it like it before. So hopefully they'll shut up shop soon. Got something in it anyway. Oh, boy, got one, old boy. They should be sized, that one, I think. The octopus attacks have stopped for the moment. Yep, there's Keeper. I'll be back if we've got three out of them. It's a much needed reversal of fortune. Hallelujah. That $32,000 3D plotter Pete bought to help him boost his numbers is starting to pay dividends for Team Triton. Pete tallies up the morning shot. Ah, it's good to see a few go in there. Fairly new, did he? 89 lobsters. That's $8,900 worth. Next couple of days, we'll get a few more. I'd say this one here, the middle one. Uh, I'll be tossed up. What is it? Oh, geez. That's hovering about. 1.75. We've had two like that. Their catch of the morning is also a winner. Under conditions, boats are right. Don't expect many big ones. $190 fish, $195. Expensive salad. Eight kilometres south of Bruni Island. Oh, mate. What's going on? And Squizzy's strategy to move further offshore isn't working. Five pots for nothing. We're going well now. We pulled 13 pots today, and um, this was our best line yesterday. And today's just nothing in them. I know the area pretty well, but I, I don't think it's the weather, it's something else. I don't know what's going on here. I really don't. These fish should be improving, and now we're just pulling blank pots. I don't know what's going on. It's not the weather. These, these fish should be getting better and better. Tell me the way he's baited them up. What? I reckon it's Tavis' fault. He's done something. They're baited perfectly, mate. I held my mouth right. Oh, they baited Job up. I think all skippers blame their deckhands, even when it's their fault. Own the thing. I up. I, Brendan John Taylor. It's not my fault. Captain's always right. It's got to be Taylor's fault. Rub the wood, change the luck. He's done something. He's changed our luck. Tell him to go get his own piece of wood and rub it. Now it's the bold contender under attack from Octopus. You see these bastards, they're never a good sign. They got a killer ring in the pot and absolutely destroy it. Sharp knife, Phil. The Matsaka Islands. And Skipper Glenn and Decky Jake are hauling in some of the pots they set earlier in the day. That's going to be interesting to look at. Definitely see three. Yeah, no, there's a couple of bigger ones in there. That fish there, he's not from here. He's not a permanent resident here. <laughs> That's the permanent resonance colour. He's come from, he's come out of bloody like six or eight fathoms, so. It's a prized restaurant showpiece. But bigger doesn't mean tastier. The just measure ones are the best tasters, and yeah, up to a kilo. The bigger they get, they get a bit tougher and they're stringy to pull apart, and they're still nice. What but are you saying about not, me? You're getting old and stringy. <laughs> 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 You're about a four kilo lobster. <laughs> I'm worth a four kilo overweight. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, 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 it's all right. If I asked for it, I cop it. <laughs> you did. We just pulled 15 pots for our day shot and we got 15 crays out of them. We had them in, we had them in on the shallower line, so it's a little bit too much swell, I reckon. The numbers aren't huge but the lobsters are all one to two kilos plus. Big money fish. The next 35 pots we got down a bit deeper, so it'd be interesting to see what we, we get out of that. Hockey, Caves, Hockey. 
Another unwanted intruder. Look at the size of that. The octopus are having an absolute field day. Bloody good pot too. Another $11 a kilo predator off to a fancy restaurant. That was a nice fish, wasn't it? Was. Bonus red one. What a waste of a money fish. What a waste. Lockie killed two, so that left us with three. We are getting totally smashed by octopus. Just disappointing. We finally found a few fish and sold the octopus.